the trouble with data models. You know, I'm starting to hear some comments and these comments are disturbing me. I'm starting to hear that our Canadian governments, some provinces, but mainly municipalities, are being asked to take all of their data and organize it in very specific data models. The problem is these organizations have lots of different businesses, lots of different departments that do different things. And because they do different things, they can't possibly organize all of their data into a common data model. Let me explain. If you think about some of the services that our governments provide, um, think about a paving project for roads. Well, they provide that paving project and they need to maintain information about that paving project. Well, the way that that information is organized and maintained should be done in a way that's suitable for that paving project. Um, they also need to manage physical assets like bridges or light posts. And those physical assets have information about them that needs to be organized in a specific way for that physical asset. It makes sense. The same could be said for bus schedules or, 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 or garbage collection routes. There's lots of different businesses and, and ways to organize data for specific tasks that are done within a municipal government. So if they're now being asked to take all of their data and force it into a single data model, well, that's not going to work. And so the only option that these organizations have is they have to then create different copied data models for all of their different businesses that are dispersed throughout the organization. I mean, to me, this is exactly the opposite of what we should be doing. By doing this, we are deliberately creating information islands within our within our governments, when we should be trying to connect those communities and create the data and organize the data in a way that you can have holistic analysis across the entire the entire city or the entire government so that you can actually get some some really good insights into it. But all of that is going to be impossible if the data is sitting on islands. And if you talk to the people in these municipalities, they want to have a single representation of the truth, but can't. They, they, many thought or think that GIS is supposed to be the savior, should be able to solve this problem, but it isn't. I think ultimately they want the mixed messages to end, but it won't. GIS is a powerful tool, but many are still using it like a simple spreadsheet. I mean, you think about it, when you're operating in GIS, the geometry, the shapes, the dots, the lines, the polygons, they're all in your face. You see them, they're clearly visible. And so we feel like it's the primary focus of the work. But what do we do with those lines? What's commonly done is we take these lines and we slice them up and we take those little pieces of line and stick them into a database, a traditional database table, slap a unique ID on them and call it a day. We've just, we're not leveraging the true power of GIS when we do this. And this is a very common mistake made when we're managing transportation infrastructure. We have roads, we have highways. We take these highways or roads and we pretend that they are pieces of assets separated by intersection. We take these pieces of assets, throw a unique ID, put them in a table and say, ah, I'm managing my transportation infrastructure. See, this is the root of the data model problem. Linear transportation infrastructure, like roads, is not made up of discrete chunks. And when you do that, when you take a road and slice it up and stuff those pieces into a traditional database table and throw an ID on them, well, what you're doing is you're forcing a predefined data model onto that asset. And well, maybe it works for you. Maybe, maybe your organization has created a data model that you're quite happy with, and it could represent everything you'd ever want to see from an IT or a GIS perspective. And then your traffic department comes along and they need to do a traffic study. And their specific software requires a data model that looks like this, and it happens to be different than yours. Or maybe the garbage collection group wants to distribute an app to the residents so that they can actually, you know, see when the garbage truck is coming. But in order for that app to work, the data model needs to look like this, and it's different than yours. Well, the only way you can service that is by taking your data model and exporting it, altering it, changing it, aggregating it, making copies, and you end up having all of this work done in order to, to, in order to, to supply information to all these business units when you didn't need to do it in the first place. See, 
we can get away from this madness and actually have a common representation of your information. The first thing we need to do is stop representing your, your transportation infrastructure in a predefined data model. Don't do it. Don't choose any model. Represent your transportation infrastructure the way it exists in the real world. And then when you're asked to generate data models, you do so dynamically on demand. So how do we get there? The first thing we need to do is we need to remove the artificial walls that we've built up along our roads in our transportation infrastructure. We need to take down those walls and combine all of those different road pieces into a continuous asset. And so you may end up with a list of single, potentially long assets. We call them roads. It could be 500 meters, it could be five kilometers, it could be 500 kilometers, a single asset. Then what we do is we take the information about that asset and rather than relating it to some sort of a unique ID like we did before, we reference that information by location. So we reference it to a route. It's always going to have a route and it's always going to have a location along that route. That location could be referenced by something familiar like an XY or a lat long or an elevation in top of that. Or it could be referenced by an offset, a linear offset from the beginning of that route to where we are. It could also be referenced by an offset from another asset on that same route. Lots of ways to reference the location of your information. And it doesn't even have to be a single location. Some, lo some pieces of information like speed limit ranges or projects are better suited for ranges of location. So it'd have a starting location and an ending location, commonly called from and to measures. There's so many ways to reference your information, but the point is we reference it the way it exists in reality, not by some arbitrary ID. And finally, we create a series of, I don't know, let's call them cookie cutters. We create these cookie cutters that represent the data models that you need to run your various businesses. The thing is though, all of these data models are empty. It's simply a container. When we need those data models, we take these little cookie cutters and we slice our, our, our information according to the representation of the data that we need. And so that cookie cutter generates the data model for that purpose. We then take that data model or that data and use it for that purpose. It could be an output. It could also be an input. Maybe you have a field collection activity going on and the app that you're using requires a very specific data model. No problem. Create a cookie cutter, an empty data model for that app. And when we need it, only when we need it, we take that cookie cutter, slice our data, or slice the place where the data is going to be, hand it over to that app, and do the data collection. The key here is, once we've created those slices or generated those little packets, those are disposable. Those pieces of data never get managed. They simply get used. The only place where information is actively managed is in our central system of record. See, if we do this, then we can have a common unified system of record for all of our transportation data while still meeting all the varying demands of data models that we are seeing and will continue to see. My name is Arif Rafiq. I'm the Transportation Industry Manager at Esri Canada, and me and my team, we're here to help Canadian governments evolve the way we manage our transportation infrastructure.